head coach of the uh, previous head coach of the New York Giants, uh, Pat Shermer. So mm-hmm. Pat Shermer, Mark Mester, Bubba Baker, and Mike Utley, and sorry, Frank Cush. Frank Cush was uh, what 1950s in the 50s. And, they won like back to back national championship team. He was the anchor of both the offensive and defensive lines. Well, and, and at the anchor position of, of the offensive and defensive lines, he came in at 5'7", 190 pounds. Which <laughs> <laughs> is amazing to think. That, I know. I mean, that's, well, I know it's 70 years ago, but it, it, even in the 80s, like, you couldn't even imagine a, a guy that size playing that position. So uh, hats off, obviously, to him and, and what he was able to do in the coaching ranks uh, as well. I'm glad you brought up Pat Schirmer. I was going to bring him up uh, simply because of his team accomplishments, being a captain at 87, uh, a Rose Bowl champs. Yeah. Um, and Buster Stanley, and, and I will say this, Grant Glasgow has an opportunity twice because he was 60 with the Lions, but he was 61 at Michigan. Oh, we could bring so him we up might, tomorrow. We yeah, know. we might bring him up tomorrow. But um, uh, Buster Stanley was one of the players, and I know he's not, I'm not saying he's on the list, but in one of the greatest goal line stands that Michigan has had when Penn State came into the conference in 93. Oh, Miguel and Paterno kept running the ball. Yes, you remember that? Uh, it was like four downs from the four-yard line. They ended up yes. at about the two, and it was Buster Stanley. And then our very own lives in Detroit now. Jared Irons comes in to to, to seal the deal. And, that was and we, we, we had a big game in that game, didn't he? He did. Yeah. Yes, he did. So just a, just a moment. Uh, Buster Stanley was on that defensive front. But uh, I'm good with, with all of those guys. Obviously, Mike Utley. There was just an article recently yes. about where are they now. Um, that I saw uh, about Mike Utley and the fact that he's had to have a new surgery where they actually, I don't know that I understand the surgery that he had. They they took out some like bones in his vertebrae and he said he almost died. Right, and and he's got iron rods and he basically had to start over um, in regards to the rehab um, of, you know, being not... He's obviously had this goal of being able to walk off the field at Ford Field, but, um, you know, they he had to start over the rehab because he had trained an awful lot and had his upper body was, I mean, he was jacked up um, and then had to have the surgery. Um, so, you know, obviously keep him in your thoughts as he continues to fight the, the spinal cord injury that he had when he was with the Lions. Messer was really, really good, too. I mean, he was not a big guy. He was, I don't know what it was a defensive tackle either. No, and I broke his record. What, consecutive starts? Yes. Wow, he, had, well, he had 49. He had 49, and I was able to get 50. So, And, and I had a chance to meet him. He came on the pregame show last season. Um, he was in Ann Arbor. What a, he's, a, he's a really good guy, too. Gov? It's hard to disagree. Uh, definitely uh, no passion towards disagreeing whatsoever. Right. I think Glasgow is definitely number six out of these. And it's, if he was 60 for both, maybe. Could end yes, the conversation, yeah. but uh, I get the debates between Cush and Shermer, and let Spartan fans decide that. Yeah. I mean, Messner was Messner has to be on it before Shermer, oh, yes, because of the all Big Ten mm-hmm. uh, recognition that he got and his mustache. <laughs> Man, it still has a team. 80s porn mustache. Oh, oh yeah, and I remember, <laughs> I remember here, Siren covering them in the, in the Rose Bowl with, with him and the King of Wales. One of the offensive line guys, Dingman or one of those guys at Disneyland and Lowry's Beef Ball and mm-hmm. Mezzer on the roller uh, coaster. Uh, he's a really good guy. Greg, where are you on this? You're you okay with everything? He's okay with it. So there's our four on the poll. Uh, Stoney and Jansen with Heather. You can vote now. Uh, Mike Utley, Bubba Baker, Mark Messner, Pat Shaw. Who wins? I think Utley wins on sentiment alone. I would personally, if I was voting, which I will, his, his career, I'm going with Bubba Baker. I think yeah. so, too. You know, and, and the one thing that, that we, I don't know that you mentioned, um, 23 sacks. It was an unofficial um, you yeah. know, stat at that time. But if he, if, if it was an official stat, he'd be the, the, the all-time leader in single-season sacks. Yeah. Well, Brett Favre just would have, uh, you know, <laughs> bent over again on purpose and gave it the straight hand. Yeah, or it would have been back then. It would have maybe been Packers Careful. quarterback Lynn Dickey. <laughs> Whatever the Packers uh, quarterback was back yeah. then. All right, uh, coming up next, indoor dining is done. 
you okay with it or are you uh, pissed off as a consumer uh, of the wide nine at 835 Wednesdays with Wojo at 935 right now it is time WXYT FM and WXYT HD1 Detroit. A radio.com sports station. Sports headlines all day, every day. From the Soul by Mark Z Sports Desk, this is 97.1 The Ticket. This update is brought to you by Soul by Mark Z.com. According to a story from the NFL Network's Tom Colasaro, Lions Matthew Stafford has a partially torn ligament in his right thumb injury that occurred in Sunday's game against Washington. Stafford will be evaluated during practices this week, but it's expected that he will play in Sunday's game against the Carolina Panthers. The Pistons hope that seven is a lucky number for them this evening. That's where team officials will pick in the first round of tonight's NBA draft. If you believe all the mock drafts that were out there, the Pistons will take Florida State forward Patrick Williams. That is, of course, if he's still there at seven. The way I, the, the way I play, I can fit into many systems and then um, the mindset that I have coming in is, is, is not to, to come in and, and, and um, be uh, entitled to anything. It's just to come in and, and, and work my way up. Reportedly, Williams is being targeted by the Chicago Bulls, who own the number four pick in tonight's first round. It's an important day for the Michigan High School Athletic Association's Executive Committee, which will meet today to iron out a return-to-play timetable for fall sports which were officially suspended until December 8th through an executive order that was issued back on Sunday by Governor Whitman. Meanwhile, the members of the College Football Playoff Committee are set to meet on a conference call today to discuss a proposal from Pac-12 Commissioner Larry Scott that would see this year's playoffs delayed until late January or early February due to the recent surge in new coronavirus cases in America. It's expected that proposal, however, will be rejected by the committee. From the Ticket Update Desk, I'm Tony Ortiz. For more, stay tuned to 971 The Ticket and Radio.com. Live from the Jamie Samuelson Studio, Stoney and Chanson on 971 The Ticket. Thank you, T.O. And I understand, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, T.O. finished second to Michael B. Jordan for the uh, sexiest man alive. So, uh, congratulations to uh, the great Tony Ortiz. Do want to pass on. Uh, our get well wishes. It's not happening until January, and I believe he's still working right now. But uh, uh, Mojo, Mojo in the morning, just a great guy, and obviously a broadcasting institution, and yes, a rival, but a uh, terrific human being. He revealed yesterday that he has to have open heart surgery, and uh, he wants to spend time with his family. So over the holidays, and it's not urgent, urgent, we get it done now. So he, like most of us, hate 2020. So he's going to wait till January of 2021 for better luck. So uh, he thinks everything's going to be all right. And uh, so uh, thoughts and prayers, Godspeed to uh, to Mojo. That's for sure. Great dude. So all right. When you're in a situation like him, don't you just like go to town and eat whatever you want for the next 60 days? Uh, you do whatever the doctor tells you to do. <laughs> That's, That's, yeah. All right. Well, here's why. Well, here's here. I've, I've thought about this. God forbid. God forbid something happens later in my life where I say, all right, you don't have long, you know? Do I go back to smoking just for the hell? Because I still miss it. I haven't had one since, <laughs> I haven't had one since uh, April. You've got 60 two, days. I haven't had one since April of 2000. Not even, you know, not even a drag. Mm. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you get a terminal. Yeah, term, I think so. Yeah. If you get a terminal one, I, I think smoking would be the, the, the go-to, but there's probably a, I would think, a list of things that you yeah. might want to. Yeah. Yeah. Why are they stony? I don't know. <laughs> you also revealed earlier, by the way, that your wife sleeps in a Mojo in the Morning t-shirt. Yeah, I'm on her t-shirts, yes. Hey, does, does she by chance want a Jansen jersey? <laughs> <laughs> she obviously doesn't want a stony jersey. Sure. Hey, especially if it's a, if it's a Michigan one, because she's an old sure. She would have absolutely sleep in a Jansen jersey. kind of be like you're sleeping. Jansen, right? <laughs> I mean, it could be a little weird. Yeah, I just didn't, uh, well, I don't, uh, I don't think I'm sleeping with Mojo because she has a right? Uh, yesterday, I went out to lunch uh, at the Moose Preserve because, oh, well, I, I go out to lunch often. And yes, Cub, I did have soup. Um, but uh, yesterday was the last day to go out for you know, in house dining. You know, at, at restaurants, and uh, it kind of sucks for somebody who, you know, not a, 
not afraid to go out occasionally. I don't go as much as I used to, obviously, as long as it's socially distanced and, you know, people are wearing masks up when you eat. I'm, I'm kind of okay with it because those are the rules, but now, obviously, the rules have changed. So I'm a, I'm a rule follower. Uh, in talking with the uh, the waitress there, it's it sucks for them, especially the timing. At that particular place, they are open for Thanksgiving, and it's their biggest day of the year. Not the night before Thanksgiving. I'm talking about the restaurant itself serving a lot of Thanksgiving uh, dinners at, at that establishment and, and others as well. And and our telephone number is two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven, which is also the uh, ticket text. I'm just curious, and not so much from the people who work who are really affected by it, because we understand. It sucks, and we hope there's a compromise and somehow they can, you know, limit capacity even more and just keep businesses open because that's important. It's also important, you know, to a lesser extent in the state, you know, because you get, in the city, because you get tax revenue, you know, from obviously businesses. So, but this is the customer, the consumer, the listener. Maybe you don't even, maybe you haven't been to a restaurant since March. A lot of people haven't. I just want to know how this is affecting you at all. Do you care? Are you bummed out that you can't go out on a Saturday night or you know, go to your favorite place for lunch during the during the week? How are you feeling about that? Because you know, I, I know a lot of people are doing uh, carryouts, so you can still, you know, patronize the establishment. Mm -hmm. Here's how uh, here's how it affects me. Um, is when we first had the opportunity to go out, and I didn't realize it at the time, but when you sit down. Somebody else prepares your food. Somebody else clears the plates. Somebody else cleans up, you know, after having cooked. They clean the dishes. Not having to do that was a huge, just relief. It was being able to see people. It was being able to hear conversation. It was being able to say hi to people, even though everybody's socially distanced. But just having that relief that my wife or I didn't have to make dinner. We didn't have to clean things up. And it was just, it was easy. And it was just a relief to have that one meal where you didn't have to think about what you were going to eat other than making a selection on the menu. Heather? Um, to be honest, this doesn't affect me at all. Um, uh, since March, I can count on one hand how many restaurants I've eaten in. Um, but, I mean, I, we've been going, we've been getting to take out a ton, which we'll still continue to do. Um, I, I just would rather eat at home than eat in a restaurant. And this is not even just because of the pandemic. This is like, oh, this is how I was before the pandemic started, okay? So like, I'm just kind of, well, I'm a social person. I also just like the comforts of home. So I'd rather get takeout and eat at home. So it doesn't honestly affect me too much. And I imagine Gov, you know, taking three kids out to dinners, as I, as I know when I had, when the girls were younger, not exactly a holiday either, but getting them out of the house is also important too. They've gotten to the age now that they, I mean, they're 11, 9, and 7, where they can do pretty good in a restaurant nine times out of 10. You know, mm -hmm. it's usually the youngest acting up still with just childish crap, you know, if it happens. But uh, no, we've been going out once a week at least. And usually it's Sunday after the Lions game. Like John said, you don't have to worry about anything. It's, right. it's the end of the weekend. And then just come home and chill, and it's, I'm gonna miss it just to get out of the house for two hours. It's it, you know watching the other football games and late games and stuff on the TV wherever we go, and it's just like it was like the one thing that we could do that was relatively normal because now uh, our kids' football was done. It ended a couple of weeks ago, and baseball's been done for weeks, so we have nothing going on again. It's like back to March 13th, and it sucks. Mm -hmm. It sucks. You know, it, it definitely. Except go to the gym, I can by myself. You know, but I can't take uh, my oldest to go shoot hoops up there because they won't open the basketball courts. Right. It's too cold to shoot, out. We're shoot hoops outside. It's, we're basically back to having hardly anything to do. I know. You know where I, I recently went, and I'm guessing this affects them too? Uh, we went to Top Golf, and that was like the perfect place to go get a drink and some food and have some fun because it's it's outdoors technically and you're you're very separated from all the other groups but i'm guessing this this new three-week pause affects something like top golf too right i would assume because it's also it's a bar it's a restaurant yeah, it's, right. it's everything in, in one really so I, I don't know you know somebody can let us know if they're open i would assume it's not now yeah, hopefully and I, I have doubts on it that it will only be three weeks but, I mean, look, we're not idiots here. You see every day these numbers and the deaths in this area and in most states in this region 
it keeps getting higher and higher and higher. And even if you pay attention a little bit to what's happening around the world, in like Europe, it's really getting awful. And they were the precursor of what was happening here. And it, it, it is freaking scary. But when you don't have statistics to back up certain things, you mm -hmm. know, why do you need to close it? I, I, that's, look, I'm, I'm between a rock and a hard place. I understand it all. And I'm not gonna, you know, bitch and whine about it. I mean, I bitch and whine a little bit about the high school football stuff. Mm -hmm. I well, I saw yesterday that they they're saying one in ten people being tested are testing positive right now. Yeah, right. I mean that that's that's countrywide. That's that's pretty crazy when you think about it. I don't think the I think the restaurant should have been allowed to scale back uh, capacity a little bit. Mm -hmm. And what Heather disclosed earlier about some of the places she's been for carryout that people aren't do following the rules. Right. So shame on them. You're the you're the reason why this is happening. Exactly. Well, I think there's a lot of reasons. Yeah. Well, yes. And, and if there you're are. going to if you're going to claim that yes, we should stay open and you have the numbers to support it, like, you know, if contact tracing only four percent have been, you know, traced back to in you know, in person dining, as opposed to, you know, some other areas where the, the, the infection rate may be higher, that's where you have to look at the numbers and say, maybe there is a way to make this work and we shouldn't be singling out this one this one industry i agree and i i just read a story in the new york post that there was a wedding in ohio that had 87 guests what are you doing i know what are you doing and 32 people got it three of the grandparents are were hospitalized what are you doing it's <laughs> crazy all right we got some uh, ticket texts uh everybody remember how this started 15 days to slow the spread turned into seven months uh, have only been to one restaurant since March. That was up north this summer. It doesn't affect me at all, and I think it's the responsible thing to do. It's awful for those in the service industry to rely on the money to pay bills and survive. Take out or not, it drastically reduces the staff needed and closes places down. This is our busy time in the restaurant. It's how we make it through the holidays. I, I totally get it. Well, they've lost. The, they're losing this Thanksgiving period, which you know the the night before is a huge day. But right. you said Thanksgiving is, and then that weekend as people are out shopping. Yeah. They also lost St. Patrick's Day. I mean, is true. this, and where's the, is there economic relief coming? See, that's the other thing. Well, I'm not going to get into that, but those two sides, Congress, Senate, and the President, they just have to get their act together and figure out how to spend. At least if they agree on the amount of money, they just can't figure out, you know, where it goes. Like, come on. Uh, my restaurant closed for good in April due to the shutdown. Many more will. I'm lucky enough to have graduated in March, and I'm a teacher now. People are struggling. Uh, last one, I support the indoor dining band. It sucks, but I will use the restaurant's argument against them. Way too many people would dine at restaurants the next couple of weeks, and the pandemic is spiking. This seems like a move to help limit the spread. That's the that's the point, and, and I think it, that it is a good one because with the holidays, more people are out and about, and we saw it at how look at the colleges, Halloween parties, and if you have older people out, you know, shopping and going to dinner and all that stuff. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. This is a it's not a whole, I mean, it's, people are making this crap up. No. It's, no. It, it sucks. It really does. All right. Uh, Heather has news next. I do. And I've got some interesting and some promising news when it comes to COVID testing and a COVID vaccine. Oh, my voice cracked. Sweet. <laughs> Can't wait to hear that. Sweet. John, tell us about the Hey, Michiganders, have you been waiting for online sports betting? I'm excited to finally tell you it's almost here, and I have some good news to go along with it. If you register your account early with FanDuel Sportsbook, you'll get $100 in free bets once they go live. No deposit required. Just sign up, verify your account, and you're all set. FanDuel Sportsbook app is easy, safe, and fast. It's easy to register, make a deposit, and quickly find your bet. And when you win, they'll get you your money fast. Now, here's something I think is a lot of fun. Live betting. It's easy and fast to place a bet in-game if you like something you see. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash 100 free to claim your $100 in free bets. That's FanDuel.com slash 100 free. Must be 21 or over and present in Michigan. Bonus issued and non-withdrawable site credit that expires seven days after FanDuel goes live in Michigan. $100 is distributed as $50 site credit on each of Sportsbook and Casino. Unique user ID verification is required. Offer ends on go live date. Handling problems? Call 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help. 7-1, the ticket. Traffic. 
from the WWJAM950 Traffic Center. This report brought to you by the X Surgeon Twice Daily Thermometer. No big issues on your drive this morning. There's just one incident working to clear from the left shoulder, 275 southbound right after E Course Road. Don't take chances with COVID-19 in your family's health. Check your temperature before dinner and in the morning and get an accurate reading in seconds with the X Surgeon Temporal Scanner, the only home thermometer used and recommended by physicians and nurses. Stay safe with X Surgeon. I'm Michelle Pena with traffic. 97 won the ticket and CBS Sports Radio 1270. Your homes for the NFL on Westwood One. The Seattle Seahawks host the Arizona Cardinals. Thursday night football. Pre-game at 8 on 97 won the ticket. There are a lot.